Hello everyone, I'm Allison Gonzalez, a trainer here at Pragmatic Works, and today we are going to be talking about Power Query, specifically cleaning things up in Power Query. Now, if you go to our Power BI Bootcamp that I teach once a month, one of the steps that we always have you do is clean up your data. Part of that is renaming column headers. So adding spaces, renaming them, taking out your characters, all of that good stuff that makes it really easy to understand for you as you're working with your data, as well as anyone else using this later on to understand. And of course, this may be something that you have to do with your data on a regular basis as you're pulling in new things and building new reports. Your data comes in a mess, all smushed together, and you want it to look good and make sense. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily, in Power Query, add spaces. So if all of your column headers are coming together, all of those words smushed together into one, this video, I'm gonna show you how you can separate that out easily in Power Query, instead of going through in the desktop and clicking on every single name, opening it and giving it spaces. We're gonna do this super easy in Power Query instead. So before we dive into the code in Power Query, I'll be going into Power Query and Power BI. You could also use Power Query in Excel. They're the same. We're gonna just do it through Power BI. But before we do that, let's quickly go over the structure of M, the mashup language, what is getting written in the background in Power Query. Query and what we're going to be adding in a little snippet of code to our advanced editor. All right, let's take a quick look, go over the structure of the code that we are looking at, the M code, and talk a little bit about it so we understand better what we are going to be putting in to our advanced editor in Power Query. So this first section, your M is divided into two sections, your let expression, and then the bottom is your in expression, which is your output. So your in expression is always gonna reference the last line of the let expression, kind of a trigger effect, lets it go and run through everything else. So in our let expression, this is what we're gonna see, all of these different rows, and each of these is gonna line up with one of the applied steps so if you're looking in Power Query, that applied step on the right-hand side, these named expressions are going to match up to that. So whatever we're naming it, whatever we're calling it in this step, whether we're naming it ourselves or if it's just a default Power BI name, that is what you are seeing in that applied step section. So you can see we have a promoted headers, we have a change type, an extracted year, all of those basics that we can see there. The next section, that purple section, here's the actual functions we're working with. These are all done to tables. So we can see table.promote headers, table.transform column types, etc., all the way through. But the first thing that you're seeing in the parentheses, this is going to be the previous step reference. So in pink, that pink box right there, that is going to show off what was just done before that. And it's going to be that trigger effect that helps everything run through. We're going to have more code in that line of what we're doing on that step right there. So each step is going to run through, it's going to mention the previous step, and that's going to kind of be that trigger reaction by the end when we get to that in expression that we are going to get all of that code to work. So we're gonna run through this now in Power Query. And again, I'm going into Power Query through Power BI. You can also go into Power Query through Excel and do this same thing also. Before we get into Power Query, let's take a look at the code we are going to bring in. So first off, remember what we just looked at, that breakdown of M. Here's the code we're going to add in. And that first step, that applied step, this is going to be add space. This is essentially what the name that we are going to give it. So what you're gonna see in your applied steps when you get out of your advanced editor, it's gonna say add spaces. The next thing, what we're actually doing is a transform. We're doing a transform on the table and we're transforming the column names. Here's our previous step reference. If the step prior to this was not a change type, you would want to modify this, edit it to match up. So that way it reflected the previous step exactly. And then the next section here is here's some meat and potatoes, what we're doing, which as a vegan, this is the broccoli of what we're doing, the real thing, what we need to get to. And this is where we can see what we're doing. So for us, we're splitting the text by position. 
we can see the position of A through Z, looking at any capital letters. And so this is gonna work for specific situations, depending how your text is going, what those column headers are looking. This exact scenario might not apply. Good thing is, there's a lot of different code, lots of different options out there, or we can easily modify this one to fit different scenarios based on how your column header is actually looking. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add in spaces after any capitalized word in here. So I got this code, pretty much there's no such thing as original code out there on the internet. I had this site for me. I will also link this below so you can read this whole article. I believe they also got it from another source before that, but it's a little bit modified from what they have in here, but the gist of it is the same. So you can easily go through, reference that. You can see he got it from right over here. Ivan Bond's post, which also referred to, a little bit modified, so whoever that touches it modifies it. Really no such thing as original code. So most code that you see out there is gonna be fragmented and added together from other people that have come before and figured out great things as well. And again, I'll link this below for you so you can read this article. And also go back to this source, which this may have come from somewhere else as well, the great history of code on the internet. So let's get into Power Query. Again, I'm going in through Power BI, but if you are using this through Excel, you can also do this the same way. All right, I am working with the AdventureWorks data set. This is very common. You may have seen this, used it in any of our previous demos in our classes or on your own. It's a manufactured data set working with cycling related products. You can see here that I have five different tables. I've got a customer table, a date table, a product table, a sales territory table, as well as this fact table. All of my headers are all smushed together. All of my columns are all smushed together. You can see they are all one word, everything smushed into one. If I was gonna go through and do this individually, I'd have to go through, add spaces. It would be a pain and take forever for this much data. So instead of doing that in here, instead let's get into Power Query, modify it, add some code in and see how that works. So back on your home ribbon, we can just click on transform data to launch the Power Query Editor. And here we can see all of our tables, now queries here in Power Query, and they are each gonna load up. And now we need to add this code into the advanced editor for each of these tables. So let's start here with the customer table. I'm gonna pull up my code snippet and copy this. And then let's go into our advanced editor. And so your advanced editor is in your home ribbon. And in your advanced editor, you're only going to see the M code, the mashup language, for the query that you're on. I am on the customer query right now, so that is the only one that I'm going to see in my advanced editor. So here we are in this advanced editor. I can see all of the code that is already written. You can see this lines up with my applied step. So I have my source step. I've got the navigation splitting things up. I've got promoted headers, which we can see right here. And then I also have change type right here. Remember in our code, it's already set to change type being the last step. What you need to do before you add this in is go to your last row. And I can select this last row and I'm gonna get these little bars around it so when I scroll all the way over, I can make sure that I'm on the right line. I then wanna put a comma here. So you always need to have a comma in between your lines of code. You do not need a comma on your last line though, which is why there's not one there right now. So I'm gonna hit enter to go down to the next line then I'm just gonna control V, paste this in. That's all right that there's spaces here. It is still going to work. I'm not spacing out anything important. If I wanted it to be all smushed back together like the other previous lines are, I could do that or I could space out the other lines of code if I wanted to, to make it easier to read in there. So if I want, we can just smush this all back in so that way each of those sections look identical or I could space these sections out if I wanted to to get these all lined up kind of better math kind of that example that I had for you all in the beginning so you can kind of understand the sections a bit more 
as long as I'm not breaking anything in here, you can space it out as much as you would like to make it easier to work with. Now there's one final step before we hit done and let's see what it does. And that is to fix my in expression. So my in expression is always going to reference the previous step. Right now it's set to change type, which prior to pasting this in was the last step. So I need to change this changed type step to now match up to the add space step. So we're gonna get rid of change type. We're gonna just type in add spaces. You can see it's already giving me that. The IntelliSense working behind the scenes to help me out. I can click on that and then hit done. And now we are going to see in our column headers, like magic, like that quick go we added in, spaces for each of these. Now there's definitely different ways to do that. You're gonna learn really fast in Power BI and Power Query. There's always gonna be multiple ways to do everything. This way though, super handy, you're adding a comma, pasting in that new line of code, and then finally adjusting that in statement. You also may need to adjust the first applied step section of that code to match. But we can see if I go to my date table, I could go up into the advanced editor, change type, still the last step over here, same exact process, add that comma, hit enter, paste it in. This time I'm gonna leave it all spaced out so you can see that's not affecting anything. Change that final in statement to say, add spaces as I'm typing, it's already giving me options. Click on that, hit done. You can see it is all working. So we did customer and date. If I wanted, I would wanna go back through, hit product, sales territory, and the fact table as well. What I'm gonna do though, let's do a close and apply take this into the desktop and see how the changes are reflected there. There we go, so it is loaded on up and we have our customer table with now spaces in all of the columns and our date table has, col has spaces in all of the columns as well. Product has not, we can always go back in, add that in. Wasn't that so easy? It's so much easier, especially when you have hundreds and hundreds of columns to just add in that quick line of code, a few minor edits in your advanced editor, and you are all set, ready to go with your other edits you may have to clean up that data. So I will put that snippet of code in the description below, as well as the link for where I found this source as well. So you can go read that article, can go back to where they found code for it as well. Follow that code chain all the way back across the internet. So thank you all so much for joining me in this video. If you found it helpful, make sure to like, and of course subscribe to get the most up-to-date info for when we release additional videos. So here on our Pragmatic Works channel, we go over all Microsoft programs, but with a big focus and hundreds and hundreds of videos on the Power Platform. So if you have a different method for adding spaces in M, please comment, share it with everyone below. We all know there's multiple ways to do literally everything in Power BI, so I always like learning new ones. So happy learning, and I will see you all in the next video.